Hello there, Horror Nights fans. My name is Michael Aiello, Senior Director of Creative Development for Universal Orlando's entertainment team. And this is the perfect time as we are engaged in Halloween Horror Nights to talk to you all about uh, the event and all the exciting things that we're able to bring to life this year for Halloween Horror Nights 32. Uh, I am joined by some of my best friends in the entire world, and uh, we're just going to have a roundtable discussion and take you all through all the content that we are producing this year for this massive event. We're going to talk to some friends that are involved with all of the amazing food, all of the merchandise, uh, and we've got a lot of surprises in store, so uh, let's get going. Uh, friends, hello. Hi. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, please tell everybody who you are and what you bring to this wonderful event. Sweet. Hi, I'm Laura Sauls. Um, I am the assistant director for creative development and show direction for art and design here at Universal Orlando. That's a very long title. Lots of words. It's a long That's business That's a lot card. of words. Um, no, but I've been with the event for 25 years. I've had the great pleasure to work on Haunted Houses, Scare Zones, live shows, and now I get to lead the incredible team that creates Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Mr. Flood? My name is Matt Flood, Senior Show Director for Creative Development, Art and Design. Uh, I have been with the company for over 20 years. I've, uh, my first Halloween Horror Nights was 2007, uh, so you do the math. Um, uh, but no, have uh, been in and out of the event a little bit, got to do a lot of really fun stuff with Universal, but it is awesome being with this team and getting to work with Halloween Horror Nights specifically uh, now for a little while. So it's been, it's been awesome. Love it. Mr. Gray. Hello, <laughs> uh, I'm Charles Gray, uh, Senior Show Director for Creative Development. Uh, I've worked for the company for 30 years now uh, as a performer mostly, and then the last decade I've been with Halloween Horror Nights, and it's been great creating all the houses, not all of them, but a lot of the houses. Last year got to dabble in street zones, this year, uh, blessed with what I got to work on, and we'll, we'll find out what that is in just a second. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing about Halloween Horror Nights is the fact that everybody, and we represent a very small portion of the massive team that is involved with creating every aspect of this event, and it is truly a labor of love. Every day that we get to dabble in the world of horror and the world of themed entertainment having to do with horror, it's a complete blessing. So we're really excited to talk to you all today and give you a little bit of insight in some of the process, some of the uh, ins and outs of how we create an event like Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, before we go into the content, I would just like to know, what is one of your favorite things about working on the event? So content aside, but, but what is some of the favorite things that you just love about coming to work every day and working on this event? Charles? Uh, I would have to say uh, the audio aspect yeah. of everything. Uh, the, the, the score, the music, the environmental layers that you can add, the, uh, the triggers that people hit. Um, just really, it's, it's one half mathematical mm -hmm. and the other half completely creative and the way those uh, intersect creates such an, an amazing texture yeah. uh, that people don't really think about when they're going through. Yes, a loud noise scares you. Okay, we get that. But but how does the, the score running through the house ramp up, get you more terrified or more excited? Could you walk into a scene where there's barely any audio and that also creeps you out? So I just love the way audio works within the experience. Yeah. Laura, for, for, for being a part of this event in so many capacities, what has been something that you just look forward to every year? Um, I look forward to the guest reaction. Yeah. That's truly what I look forward to. You know, we get to create so many um, cool and horrific things. And, you know, we're, through, we're with it from the very beginning of the idea all the way through the production and the operation of the event. So once we get guests in, it's just seeing the guests at the opening moment just want to get in those gates and then seeing them kind of rush in and go to the side of the park that they want to go to. Mm -hmm. And then we've always said this, we love to wait outside the exits of the houses and just hear people's <laughs> reactions. They usually come out running and screaming and then fall into <laughs> laughter or they, you know, we've given them some extra room inside to scream and laugh and then they're talking about the house when they exit. Yeah. Um, we also find locations in the scare zones to just kind of sit and watch how these characters are interacting and how they're moving and changing based on what the guest flow is so it's really the guest experience that's yeah. what we're what we're all here for too is just to see how the guests are reacting to what we get to create 100 percent. and matt you're relatively newer to our team this is yeah. your second yeah. year with the event yeah. what and what has drawn you back to be able to uh create with us it is it well it's the collaboration yeah and 
in the collaboration, there is a specific moment, and it happens over and over and over again for whatever the idea is, but it's when it clicks. It's when everybody in the room is working together, we've been spitting out ideas, we've been coming up with things, somebody else brings in a new idea, you see a costume for the first time, you see, you hear a sound, you look at the lighting for the first time, and it's when that moment happens that you go, there it is. That's the idea that we were all, we knew it was there, and you find it and you collectively all feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's magic Absolutely. in a way that doesn't happen in any other yeah. field that, that I've been a part of. So. But it's evil magic. It's, it's evil <laughs> magic. Uh, very, very appropriate to this year, I yes. think, as well. One of, one of my favorite things is the, is the diversity in the content. That, yeah. that every year the, the goal of the event is to create something for everybody. You know, it's that mixture of, of intellectual properties, of the brands that everybody loves, and the original content. So why don't we talk a little bit about the intellectual properties this year? Yeah. And yeah. it is a very impressive slate. <laughs> completely unique. Each one of these brands is completely unique to the event, uh, completely unique to the type of content that it offers. Uh, so we've had a history with this first brand, uh, Stranger Things. Uh, which is a monumental series. Uh, and we've been able to collaborate with Netflix on this series. We've had two very successful houses in our past mm -hmm. dealing with seasons one and two. And then this year, finally, we're able to adapt a uh, massive uh, season four. Yeah. Sorry, we did Huge. one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be a, a house adapted on season four, right. which is a massive season. Yeah. The, the episodes were the longest episodes <laughs> that the series has ever done. So yeah. much content. Uh, Matt, how do you decipher a season like that and, and effectively pick and choose the moments that our guests are going to want to enter into? Right. It, well, it starts with falling in love with it and finding the thing that you fell in love with. So you start asking yourself, why is it? that I was so horrified by that moment and that hit me so hard. Why was it that this scene all built to this and I started feeling myself do this number as like, oh man, that's happening. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're looking for that in yourself and then you start listening to people. There's a lot of listening of what is it that across the fandom hits so many different people. And then it's the question of that story structure of why. So what we went into with this house was what is it about Stranger Things 4, that now, this is a personal opinion, my favorite season, what is it that made it my favorite season? Mm -hmm. What is it that hit so hard with the fans that they loved these moments? And then trying to tell that story and deliver that same feeling mm -hmm. to the guests. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it became the curse of Vecna. Yeah. Like that, the, the whole way that that played out, that's a massive story, mm -hmm. but let's tell that story. How do we tell that story? What was the collaboration with Netflix and kind of honing in on that story? Well, and you know, that's what it, that's just such a cool moment of getting to talk with them and hear their feedback on, yes, that is the through line that we were going. You know, we, we put a lot of emphasis uh, on uh, Vecna's mind layer as being kind of the central piece of this turning point in the season mm -hmm. when it's the first time Vecna didn't actually succeed in killing. And so that then added this extra level of s suspense and tension. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we started talking about kind of how we were shaping our narrative, they were like, yes, yeah, no. And, and they then started giving feedback as to like, yeah, no, we, you know, shaping it this way and it had this really cool feeling to it of, there was a there was an understanding that mm -hmm. was exciting to share with them. What was the challenge? Because again, you've got Vecna, yeah. you've got Demibats, yeah. Demigorgons are back. Uh, what is the challenge in replicating those characters, and and but also at the same time knowing that you've, it has to be created, that it's also a living, breathing attraction. Right. Right. Yeah. the The challenge is making sure that when you see that character, it hits you in the same way that you would expect that to, and then one more. Mm -hmm. You want to always elevate that. So, uh, you know, when you're watching it on a screen, uh, sure, a Demogorgon looks big, but when you see it in person, you want it to feel even larger. Right. So you design the space, you design the costume, you design, you elevate them, you make sure that when that impact hits, audio hits, we're talking audio, that audio hits strong, the lighting reveals it in just the right way, you're coming at it at an angle that suddenly it's like, oh gosh, that's huge. <laughs> um, and that's the same thing with, with Vecna. Vecna has this presence that is established with his audio, with his voice, with all of the layers of uh, 
of effects that you're hearing in the audio, but then also the way he's shot. There's this movement to him. Mm -hmm. And so we needed to create movement. We needed to create an impressive attack. So we were looking at all those elements so that when you come face to face with Vecna, mm -hmm. you're like, and I just came face to face yeah. with Vecna. I, it, I felt it. Yeah. So it's essentially a balancing act right. of trying to capture what people see here but also being able to reveal everything that they're not seeing at the same time when they when they look at that 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 image on a exactly. screen. Exactly. Yeah, that's what's wonderful. What are you? Uh, I have I have I have my favorite moments, but what are you really excited about uh, for our Stranger Things season four adaptation? Yeah, I and uh, you know having now gone through the house time and time again, it is walking into Vecna's mind lair, and and feeling that that horror. I still get it. I still am like and. I'm, I'm in his grasp. And there's scale. There's, there's scale to huge. that. It's, it's a huge scene. It's one of our largest. Yeah, uh, very big scene. Um, and so you feel that, but then it also becomes very much about he's right there with you. That yes, it's maybe large, but there's a, a claustrophobia to the fact that he is right in your face. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. I, I, I'm so excited that we're able to do this again and essentially be able to complete yeah. Every, everybody, everything everyone knows about the series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, now yeah. we are completely caught up. We've yep. done seasons one, two, three, yeah. and now four yeah. in a most breathtaking and impressive way possible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's, it's, just, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Congratulations on the, on the creative. Excited about it. Uh, happy for everybody. Yeah. It was a it's huge, huge, we're happy. huge effort everybody. by <laughs> everyone. It was such a huge effort. <laughs> um, so we're going to move away from Hawkins and we're going to travel to Pittsburgh. Because mm -hmm. this next brand is story is based in Pittsburgh. Yep. Uh, and this was a very unique collaboration with, uh, our first collaboration with Naughty Dog uh, in bringing the massively popular video game, The Last of Us, to life. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite video games of all time. And I was so excited when we were able to do this collaboration. And this one, everyone asks like, well, how do you, how do these brands come into existence for the event? Do they call you? Do mm -hmm. you call them? Mm -hmm. This one was literally a, post on a site formerly known as Twitter. And um, <laughs> Neil Druckmann, the creator uh, of Last of Us, uh, was in the park and he had just ridden the mummy and commented on how awesome he thought the mummy coaster was. And then he tweets underneath and says, uh, I really would love to do a haunted house adaptation of Last of Us. Who do I have to talk to? And someone, I think a second later, because that's social media, yep, yep. tagged me in that comment. So I literally slid into Neil Druckmann's DMs <laughs> and, said, and I said, hey, you asked who you should talk to. I'm kind of that guy. <laughs> and that literally was it. That wow. was uh, December of 2021 wow. that, that that exchange happened. And then a week later, we jump on a video call and that was the start of it. And he was already well aware of what Halloween Horror Nights is. Obviously, I was well aware of what The Last of Us is. And it began this amazing collaboration of uh, figuring out how to bring a video game like this to life. Um, Laura, talk to everybody about uh, how and, and, and what is exciting about adapting a, uh, a what is a third person game into a first person experience. Well, what was awesomely great was to work with Naughty Dog and Neil the whole, all the, all the steps of the way of our process because um, they were so involved and they were had so many details that they could share with us mm -hmm. to make this experience mm -hmm. great for a haunted house. It goes to, um, you know, the video game itself, part one ha goes to many locations, many environments. We, we first asked, where do you want us to go? Mm -hmm. Like, where do you want us to go? There's so many places we could go. And, and they brought to us Pittsburgh because it's ripe with every bit of the infected and the hunters. And it's just great. Um, immersive storytelling yeah so we went there and um, just working working with them um, to create the the runners stalkers clickers bloaters I like to say it fast <laughs> oh my oh my <laughs> um, but it, it was just fun our, our the the like I said the back and forth with the detail on our clicker masks is just so incredible the veins being in the exact right spot it was just an incredible 
incredible partnership. Um, they offered to us, they were like, would you like Tori Baker and Ashley Johnson to do all your voiceovers in the house? And we we're like, of course, yes, <laughs> yes, please. Um, and so they got them on voiceover um, sessions with mm -hmm. our team and our, this our is creators. This dialogue. This the, is the people the house. that, 100%, new dialogue that's unique to the house are voiced by the voice actors who voice the video game. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty incredible all around. Again, this collaboration was so incredible the whole way and we're just so excited because everyone's excited about the house it's yeah. the detail in the house the detail in the characters we see Joel and Ellie in there you know we're, we're all seeing them as heroes and we love that and you know that, that's an important aspect like you're literally side by side with them 100%. as they're evading all of this horror that yes. exists within Pittsburgh. 100%. You're with them their whole journey. They're trying to fight off all of these infected and, and you're trying to fight it off and they're with you. You're with them the whole journey through Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And we end leaving Pittsburgh in that final moment. So maybe there's more places we can go <laughs> with The Last of Us. Who knows? No, it, it really has been a great collaboration with Neil and the Naughty Dog team. Um, it, these are collaborations that you really strive to have yeah. because they're so excited about working with us. And obviously we're very excited about working with them. And the, the, the common trait is that everyone just wants the absolute best experience possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I remember Neil's first question when we had our first conversation was, can you do it? because it's just so large mm -hmm. and it's so detailed. Mm -hmm. And of course, the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you never say no. Yeah. <laughs> but then after the call went over, you start sweating and going, yeah. oh my can gosh, we do this? <laughs> can we do this? it's real big. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, yeah. I, I gotta say, like when we were, we were creating the approval documents and there's a, there's a page that is literally a side by side of the computer rendered versions yeah. of the clickers and the bloaters and then photography literally in the same pose. Yep right next yep. to it and you look at them on a page or on a screen and you cannot tell the difference. It's incredible. It's the, the, the teams here, our makeup and costuming teams are absolutely the best in the business. Mm -hmm. And it is, 100%. it's awe inspiring yes, every it time is. to walk yeah, in the room time. when they're sculpting, when they are, are finishing up a paint mm -hmm. and you're just looking at this creation that of course is derived from something that's known, but there it is 360 degrees uh, in real life. And, and you get, you instantly get that magnitude walking into the room. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just breathtaking. Um, yeah, so obviously we are so happy that it's here and, uh, and hopefully this is a continued collaboration. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so things are about to get a little dark. We're gonna talk about our next IP that we're adapting for this year's Halloween Horror Nights. And overall, this film is a reimagining of a very scary story. And we have the honor of being able to present what essentially is a living trailer of The Exorcist Believer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just saying that, it gives me chills. Right. Because mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is an event. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it really is an interesting process that we went through because the IP sends us the shooting script. Yeah. And that's what we were going off of. And as we were creating, they were shooting the film. Because this was in tandem. We're yes. literally designing the house as they are shooting the film. So it, it really was kind of a give and take creatively too. It's like you read the written word and are thinking, okay, we're gonna go here. We're gonna see this character. And then as they're sending us on, you know, day of pictures, yeah. you know, of, of, the, of the shots and you're like, oh my goodness. Okay, so there's a barn in the background or, or the forest looks a little different or this character is wearing this thing during this shot. So it was a lot of very like daily tweaks, changes uh, as we went through. So. For us to say they're walking through the trailer, they are literally, literally walking through the trailer yeah. because that the movie doesn't come out until uh, a few weeks before we close. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a very exciting partnership and it was very exciting to create that way. And it kind of rethinks the entire process mm -hmm. for right. you. Mm -hmm. right. like, this, this could yeah. not be created as we would typically do an original house, of course, but also not typical of how we would adapt a, a, an actual property mm -hmm. because of that day in, day out, a kind of reassessment of, of the materials that you're getting. Because right. again, you got the script first, so you're forming a picture in your head mm -hmm. as you're reading that script, 
And then you start to get visuals that, that, that fine tune that in, right? Right, mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it's taking the written word again, you're, you're reading it and you're getting invested in the story. And that's what we're trying to tell. But in a haunted house experience, you're boiling things down to the most impactful moments, the scariest moments. But the interesting thing about this film too is they really invest in the innocence of the girls. Mm -hmm. there, there's, they really invest in just the, the tr almost tragedy mm -hmm. of what's happening to these families and how they're interacting with the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're guiding the guests. And it's as if the guests are the ones being pursued and being possessed at some point. I don't want to give everything away, but <laughs> as you go through, you're feeling like you're pursued by these spiritual beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's wild. The the collaboration between the two coasts on this also was was incredibly integral in in getting this to the finish line. Yeah, and and again because there's all these moving pieces and parts mm -hmm. that we really had to be in tandem together, linked together uh, with our creative. So it's it's conversations uh, constantly with the mm -hmm. West Coast, Murdy, mm -hmm. myself, the designers on each side of how are you creating this room? How, what do we want to see deciding on those things? How the transitions work? You know, this we're creating in two different bubbles in a sense or so like, you know, one might be in a sound stage that has a different configuration. Well, how do we create these rooms on paper that may be the same, but in application and build and scenic, are different too. Yeah. So same story, but you literally could go to both coasts and see a different experience. Yeah. Yeah. And what an awesome challenge too, to create an experience that truly has a beginning, middle and an end, question mark, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also not spoiling uh, items that are in the film that, that people won't have seen yet. Well, and that's event. the direction we also got too, is like we would list like, hey, we want to see this, 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 this moment, this moment. And there are some moments that they said, do not put in the house because we want it to be a surprise. Of course. So I think it'd be very interesting to go through the house, then watch the film and then come back to the house again and really see, because some of the, the, um, the moments that are not in the house are are in the house an Easter egg form or hints or clues that as you go through, you go, oh, that's why, well, I can't even say it, but that's why, <laughs> that's why this thing is this way, right? Yeah. So I, I'm being very mysterious, but it is a mysterious house. Very, very creepy in tone. Uh, and it's I, terrifying. We had, we had rehearsals the other night and the performers are just amazing, yeah. amazing, full of energy. They're gonna bring it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna bring it this year. Mm -hmm. Well, it's truly ecstatic that we're able to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of um, put our stamp on this new reimagining of this classic story. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can only see it here at Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. So no Halloween Horror Night event is complete without our team being able to pay tribute to the monsters that started it all yeah. for Universal. And that is our uh, amazing classic monsters, the universal monsters. Uh, they are near and dear to our hearts. Um, we have successfully had many interpretations of the classic monsters in our event, but the most recent history being um, kind of a trilogy of, of houses that have featured either couple monsters or the full cavalcade of the roster. Uh, and then this year being the, f the fourth of what is a quadrology now, of, um, Ooh, big word, I, yeah, nice uh, word. I like nice that. Nice word. Nice word. Hey, uh, that's what they pay me for. Um, uh, but being having the opportunity now to kind of dive into some monsters that maybe haven't had the spotlight yeah. in our yeah. event, or 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 even maybe not considered what we would make lean into more of the main roster of classic monsters. Charles, talk to us about this brand new. Haunted House. I like what you said about the spotlight because these characters have been in the shadows yeah. uh, and now we're, we're shining a light on them, but they're gonna move right back into the shadows as we walk through their world. Mm -hmm. um, let me just give you a little bit of a backstory Please. because uh, two of these, uh, what I'm calling creatures, um, lived in London in, in the films, Invisible Man, mm -hmm. you know, we also have uh, Jekyll and Hyde and they come together as a package pair. Uh, they, in the films, they've been run out of town, you know, in the mythology. Uh, so we place them in Paris, where two of our other creatures, if you will, uh, are there. There's a Hunchback of Notre Dame, who's a very sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have uh, the uh, Phantom of the Opera, which 
is when you go through the house is such a huge part of the house too. Mm -hmm. So all four of these, all attacking on one night, uh, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when we walk into the experience, we're in the streets of Paris, we're beneath the streets of Paris, beneath the opera house, we're seeing these creatures, these monsters, these horrific gentlemen, if you will, <laughs> in a whole new light. We're not, I hate to use the word modernizing, but we are bringing them up to some of the modern tropes that we have. For instance, the Phantom of the Opera is now a face carver. He always has his classic mask. He's done away with that. It is now carving the skin off of people and wearing them as a mask. <laughs> like um, you do. Like, like you do. do. Like do Family okay. fun. Yeah. Uh, and then we go into just the different uh, looks and textures. You know, we did say that the Hunchback is, is a very sympathetic character, but we get to see him up there in the bell tower and it's as if he's defending his home turf and we're invading it so he's coming after us too the Jekyll and Hyde portion is you know Jekyll's this little tiny guy and then boom he's this huge massive creature um, and again Invisible Man uh, you don't see him at all no I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> we have wrappings and different iterations of him too but I gotta tell you this this experience the design team such, did such a great job. Yeah. It's huge in scale, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's terrifying. The soundscape is completely different than any other house. It's very cinematic, and classic as we go through. Yeah. Fantastic. So just like our Universal Monsters, this next brand is no stranger to Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, I, it's even, I think this is even more than a brand. This, this doll. <laughs> is no stranger to Halloween Horror careful. Nights. I know, I'll be careful. He's, he's, he's lurking somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. He's been very involved in the creative process. But that is, of course, uh, Chucky's ultimate kill count. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, talk to us about, uh, because Chucky has been a part of the fabric of Halloween yeah. in the past, what makes this house unique uh, to this year's event? Well, I'll start with the Sci-Fi USA series. This is just incredible storytelling, really great kills. So, I mean, you know, uh, this whole ultimate kill count concept is a celebration of the fact that as a franchise, Chucky knows how to do kills, mm -hmm. right? Like that is, and to fit that into HHN is just awesome. Uh, so we, this series has, has really like doubled down on that side of it, as well as the, the storytelling, the characters are great. Uh, so the fandom wanted a house that, you know, celebrates this entire franchise and mm -hmm. specifically the Sci-Fi USA series. That's so awesome, right? And then you get so, Chucky involved. Right, so <laughs> that's where it gets a little strange. Okay. So Chucky uh, showed up and we had, you know, been making this house that I'm talking about, but then like he doesn't really approve of the fact that we're not actually killing people. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a thing. Right, it's a thing. So he, he jumps in and starts actually killing people after possessing our entire house. And I mean, it's super fun, right? Like, yeah. woohoo, yay, line up in a conga line and walk in and get killed by Chucky. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do here, right? Oh, yeah. uh, but no, he, he mocked us relentlessly. He sure did. Um, just kind of like, oh, you, you fake this all the time. How about we do it for real? Yeah. And that was, I guess, a learning experience to watch <laughs> a real master bring horror to Halloween Horror Nights. Well, uh, it follows suit with the series yeah, as well, because exactly. the, the series is incredibly self-aware. Oh, absolutely. They, uh, you know, the, the whole franchise has, has really become fully aware, but the series, like, I, oh, I love so much. He has his own talk show. He talks about it after the episode. He'll sit there and run through the kill count of the show. Like, it's just super fun. It's super gory. It is actually scary. It genuinely is. I mean, Chucky's always been terrifying, uh, but you put all those elements together and it makes a very unique experience for Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. And a very unique collaboration with a killer uh, doll. Yeah. <laughs> he uses a lot of foul language. <laughs> <laughs> he does. The, uh, the bleep-er that has to exist yes. in, he the, hated in the house. Yes, he, he hated, hated it. it. He, he got really upset with minute. us. We're like, nope, you can't say that, yeah. Chucky. Can't say that, yeah. So uh, a continued collaboration with a, yeah. this killer, killer doll. doll. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we would be remiss if we did not talk about all the exciting original content that exists within this year's Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, it is the lifeblood of the event. It's how this event started. So we have an entire new batch of new characters, new stories, new environments to show all of you. Matt, take us through 
the Twisted Origins of Dr. Oddfellow. Yes, Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. It's so cool. This character, Dr. Oddfellow, is one that Halloween Horror Nights fans have heard the name, they've never met, and this year we get to be introduced. And in fact, this house is showing the moment that Dr. Oddfellow became immortal. But where it gets really fun is that Dr. Oddfellow, of course, you know, ringleader of the circus, and the whole purpose of it is to create a ritual sacrifice using the power of the Zodiac to kill everyone and become immortal. But it's a circus and it's horrifying because it's the 1930s Dust Bowl. You have horrifying clowns, all these like crazy bizarre acts, a whole like kind of, you know, from that era, that freak show type of thing where it's these creatures that are coming out at you. And the horrific imagery, the things that guests experience in this house is incredibly fun. It's gory, it's twisted, it's just all the stuff that is Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. and. I love this house, <laughs> and I'm excited for all our guests to do it. I can't tell. So, yeah, <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah, super fun. The next house is truly bringing to life a beloved attraction that, that no longer exists in our park. Charles, Dueling Dragons, Choose Thy Fate. That's right. Uh, that queue line for that roller coaster was uh, amazing. It had such story. People loved it, and so we're going back to that, and we're embellishing. We're, we're growing the story, but okay. I gotta talk as fast as I can because there's a lot of story and I'll get it as quickly as possible. Okay. And go. <laughs> All right, so here's what happens. The Lady of the Lake turns Merlin into the Enchanted Oak, which we will see in the house as we go through. Because he's now gone from his kingdom, his spell book lays open and unprotected. Blizz Rock, and the, basically the fire and the ice warlocks, they have a chance to now attack, which they do. And we're walking through as the battle's going on all around us. They get to the spell book, it rebounds, curses them, turns them both into dragons. As we work our way through, the dragons are attacking and all their minions, the trolls, the fairies, the skeletons, the demons, all attacking us until we meet the dragons. At the very end, you get to choose your fate. Just like the ride, you can either choose ice, or fire, and which side do you think is going to win? Because if you go through and pick the wrong side, you get the warlock. If you succeed, you get Merlin. Or if you like me, you just hope the bad guys win and you go through and you win. <laughs> but there's four different endings. You're gonna have to go through quite a few times. It's, it's gonna be amazing. That's wild, amazing. that's wild. So, <sighs> okay, well, you're not done yet, because we've got mythic legend yes. over here. We've got folklore. Horrific folklore as another one, which is uh, Yeti uh, campground kills. Yes. So, uh, boy, the <laughs> Yeti house we had in the past was such a success, and it, and every event, like we say, is diverse in storytelling. This is a very dark humor house. I mean, there's a lot of gore, a lot of things that you're going to laugh at and be angry at yourself for laughing because it's just not appropriate. <laughs> horrible things are happening. But you go through and you see all these Yetis as you go through attacking this campground, the ranger stations. Uh, you go through that every year there's a tradition that people get angry with me, but certain things get killed in this house that you don't want to see die. <laughs> Wink. All right, as you go through, um, it's hilarious. And a lot of these returning uh, performers were Yetis in that house, and they're coming back this year because they want to be Yetis again. And it's going to be gory, hilarious, um, and very intense as we go through. Fantastic. Laura, there are two remaining original houses at the, at the very nefarious end of the spectrum. Yes, yes. Blood Moon, Dark Offerings. It is in its basic, easy form. It's a colonial era kill cult. It's a cult of people. Me and my who, first band. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's a group of people who have done not so well in their, their, their harvest and they believe that the moon will tell them um, when it's time um, to have a great harvest and to kill all non-believers. And the blood moon rises and they believe that's the sign. So they have to build a, um, a ritual tower of body parts to the blood moon. So they kill anybody that's not a part of their cult. Um, it's a bloody, 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 really bloody, bloody house. I can't say it enough. It's a bloody house. It's a, an aggressive house. A lot of our, what we call OG characters are in this house mm -hmm. and it is bloody and aggressive and aesthetically beautiful. Oh, awesome. the, the colonial town you walk through, you're gonna, it's, it's much like Dead Man's 
Dead Man's Pier last year, yeah. like where you saw the town through the, it's the depth. You see the next, like the place before you even get there. You see the bell tower before you even get there. We have a person on top of the bell tower ringing the bell to, to call the kill call to, to action. And then at the end, you see this, this, um, just this, this thing built to the blood moon, this tower of body parts and blood built to the blood moon. It's an aggressive bloody kill call. It's it's bloody. Sounds bloody. like one of my weekends. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that. <laughs> and then the we The darkest deal. The darkest deal. Yeah. It's that um it's that age-old story of signing your your life away for fame. Mm -hmm. um, and we're following the story of Pine Straw Spruce. Um, he's a blues musician in the Mississippi Delta, and he struggled to find fame in his music. Um, and when we approach this haunted house, he is signing his, um, he's signing his life away to the collector. And we, as maybe his bandmates, are following his rise to fame. And then at, as we follow his rise to fame, the collector is possessing all of those who come in contact with us. As Pine Straw goes back to his home to visit his mother, the collector possesses his mother. And as Pine Straw gets that ultimate stage, that ultimate moment of fame, he strums his guitar, one strum, and then we see the collector come and steal his soul. And then we are in the hellscape where we see all these other musicians and people that have been taken by the collector and at the end we see the most beastly form of the collector. So Charles's great autobiography. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Fun times. Fun times. Good times. Good times. Good times. But all kidding aside, truly a, 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 a massive new collection of, of horrifying stories that we're going to bring our guests this year. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Halloween Horror Nights is the fact that the entire Universal Studios Florida park completely transforms. And the major component of that transformation are the scare zones that we're able to bring to life. Laura, talk us through what is a, a really interesting kind of overarching story binding all of the scare zones together this year. Yeah, we are, um, we're so excited that this year, um, Dr. Oddfellow's path and, and how he became immortal and how he's kind of inviting us into his path of immortality only to deceive us in the worst way to kill us all and steal our souls. That, that Dr. Oddfellow story is so interconnected to all the scare zones. Mm -hmm. All the scare zones have just rich themes themselves, but they are all connected to Dr. Oddfellow's story. And he has a hand mm -hmm. in every single scare yeah. zone, which is really cool this year, because it's something I don't think we've ever really done and explored. Or in a while. Not in a long yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. You come in to the front gate and you're going to see Dr. Uh, you see Dr. Oddfellow atop our Halloween Horror Nights sign welcoming you all in. He's that snake oil salesman. He's got his Dr. Oddfellow's collection of horrors at the front gate. He's giving you that table of contents of what you will see. All of these creatures that he has created or befriended or twisted in some way. He's got that collection right at the front gate telling you, come and see my path of immortality. I want you to join me, but really, again, it's the big lie. He's going to <laughs> kill you yeah, we're, and we're steal your soul. Flame. Yes, one hundred percent. So that collection of horror is our table of contents, and just amazing. And he shows you kind of now what he's been hiding in the shadows this whole time, and what he can do. Um, and then you start. He wants you to follow his journey to mm -hmm. his immortality. So you start in the Jungle of Doom expedition horror. This is where, in the 1920s, um, Dr. Oddfellow was an explorer and he was exploring this jungle and found this glowing green skull that he felt the power right away as soon as he found this skull. And he felt, felt this ability to twist things into these maniacal creatures that could do his bidding, mm -hmm. that could tear humans apart in order for him to collect the souls. And he felt this, this skull kind of feeling the power to gain immortality. Mm. This skull becomes his cane of souls, mm. um, which uh, we know that story, mm. right? We know how the cane of souls is connected to one of our most iconic characters. Jack. We've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Jack the Clown. Um, away, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and so in the Jungle of Doom expedition horror, um, you see all these twisted, uh, tropical, beast-like creatures that are just attacking you through the jungle. Of course, in his journey, as Matt mentioned earlier, you go to the Dust Bowl Circus in 1930. This is where Dr. Oddfellow gained his immortality. Right. This is also where he killed Jack Schmidt. Mm -hmm. Who, and Jack Schmidt might have cut the eye of Dr. Oddfellow on his way into that infamous box, which is where maybe Jack gained his immortality. Maybe. 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 Mm. <laughs> um, so that was the 1930s. Well, Dr. Oddfellow, over these decades of twisting these diabolical creatures, he needed a place to store all of these horrific things. And Shipyard 32 Horrors Unhinged in San Francisco is the shipyard where Dr. Oddfellow housed all these beasts and creatures. And we might find out that doctor's been, Dr. Oddfellow has been manipulating the us creative people all these years, that maybe some of his creatures were the creatures that had populated some of our scariest haunted houses in the past. And in the shipyard is where he's housing all of these creatures. And on, oh, on the Halloween nights, he opens and unleashes all these creatures onto every unsuspecting guest. It's a bloody massacre of these horrific beasts. Well, we jump to 1969. Dr. Oddfellow has, um, has positioned himself with this horde of vampires. Mm -hmm. And he's decided he doesn't want to wait anymore. He needs more power. He wants a bloodbath to ensue. So he talks this horde of vampires in to dropping in on a peaceful 1969 mm. Summer of Blood music festival. <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> Groovy, right? These very peaceful music festival goers are then massacred by this horde of vampires. It's fun that the soundscape of that, that oh, scare yeah. zone is just Great. incredible, along with the, just the horrific screams, blood curdling screams of people. But then we all know the story of Dr. Oddfellow and what, what Jack believed he killed Dr. Oddfellow. But when we, he thought he killed Dr. Oddfellow, Oddfellow went to the Zodiac realm. Mm -hmm. He did not die. And in the Zodiac realm, which is our Hollywood scare zone, dark Zodiac, in our Zodiac realm, he discovered that if he twisted the, every Zodiac, he would gather every human souls because everyone's tied to the Zodiac. So in Dark Zodiac, these Zodiac creatures are twisted into these really horrific, terrifying Dark Zodiac beings. And that's his story. And he's telling you, if you follow the, my path of immortality and how I became such, such this immortal powerhouse, you can have it too. But not really. Yeah. You are just going to build his strength up and he's going to take your soul to become more immortal. That's wonderful. And, and again, the best part is, is you can follow this, this path of travel mm -hmm. that you've described, but at the same time, all of these are very unique zones. On 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, completely different. They're yeah. awesome. They're yeah. um, which again is something that we're known for in this event. Yeah. And again, always bringing brand new things to the table every single year. So very excited about the story you all have crafted. Um, again, I'm a fan here. Like, you know, I'm on the outside looking in on this thing and, and it's just, it's just fantastic. So congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So why don't we talk our show experience this year? Yes. I guess we could bring someone to the table to talk about that, <laughs> I suppose. You don't have to. I, I, there's no one better to talk about the show experience than the person responsible for one of the most successful show experiences we've had at the event, senior show director, Mr. Jason Horn. That's me. Hello. Hi. Thanks Welcome for having to our, me. Um, our seance. seance. This is exciting. I mean, you made it very romantic. That was for you. Thank you. I, I assumed that when I came in. Yeah. This is less fire than in the show, but just slightly. <laughs> Talk about it. So this is the third iteration yeah. of Nightmare Fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've just been growing a story over these three years. Right. Talk, talk about the process. Um, as far as a story goes, I, yeah, you're right. We've been building this world over three years, which for me is very exciting uh, to build this from the ground floor up. We've created, like, uh, you know, brand new characters and storylines and... Uh, Along the way, and if, if there are any eagle-eyed fans, we've kind of been dropping some breadcrumbs to what this is leading up to for this year. Because this year's show, being the third, 
uh, Nightmare Fuel Revenge Dream. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely the third in the trilogy of the Halloween Nightmare Fuels, um, which is something I've been thinking about. And, and, you know, with the popularity, I think we realized that we could, this, this could live over a couple of years. And really kind of interesting, the ending that I've got for this year was something I considered for year one. And then I thought, oh, well, no, maybe we shouldn't jump to it and see how far this train can go a little bit. Um, but it, it became so popular, like almost right away. We were all floored. We had all been working so hard. You know, that was, that was still early days of trying to, to piece the show together and figure out what the heart of it was, knowing the aesthetic we wanted to create, knowing the music we wanted. It should be metal, it should be dark wave, electronica. Mm -hmm. It should have this uh, aesthetic to it that, that I think fits a Halloween Horror Night show. The, the caliber of talent in the show is like, I feel so privileged that I get to work with the Fuel Girls and these aerialists. Like I just sit in rehearsals every night and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in awe of what they do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's all very exciting. What makes a show experience like this so integral to the overall makeup of what Halloween Horror Nights is? That, that's interesting, because I know that's something we talk about and that's something I think about a lot. And I think, I think the show lives in its own world. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is a rest for people to come and enjoy something completely different than what you good folk are offering out in the street, <laughs> in your houses. I don't know what you do all day long. <laughs> which, is, which is actually so true, because we all get caught in our own little corners. And even though we sit just feet apart, I have no idea. I don't even know what the houses are this That's on year. purpose. Jason. Okay. <laughs> away. Yeah, the meddlesome I'm, Jason. I'm <laughs> close the door. I'm going to go back and watch this video, though, and I'm going to be very well informed. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm going to fast forward to me. Uh, um, so, no, I, I think this show should, should, should be its own entity that lives on its own, that should be a rest for people to come. And, and hopefully, you know, my job, while you guys are scaring people out in the streets and in the, in the houses and the scare zones and all this stuff, you know, my job is to, to give them some entertainment that's different than what they're seeing out there. And they can come in and, and hopefully, at the end of the day, we want to give people, you know, bang for their buck. Mm -hmm. We want to give them the best high quality show we can. And uh, I think we have been doing that. And it, it shows in the guest's satisfaction with the show and what it's become. But, you know, you, you kind of mentioned story and, and how this is a trilogy. So for, since year one, we've been following this character, um, that really the nightmare creature who every year, every Halloween, she, she goes into people's dreams and she is pulling spirits into her world. You know, we use the bed. That's our portal into the nightmare. And every year, that's how the show starts. And that dreamer gets pulled into the world. And I always tell my dancers, which I call the, the nocturnal spirits, I'm like, at some point, you were a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And this, this nightmare creature has gone along and collected all of you and is, is sort of building the nightmare army. And that's the story we've been building. And also along the way, you know, we've created some um, audio wise, we've created musically some motifs that repeat, um, that, that change depending on the character and then depending on the status of the character. And those are little things I don't even know if people pick up on. Even the color palette we choose, um, has, has slowly shifted over the last two and will shift one more time with this one, but it's all leading up to, to something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are all creatively the really cool things that we get to, to dive into, especially since it's a story that we're creating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, we can take it however we want to take it. Mm -hmm. So this year it'll be a brand new dreamer. The way I look at this year is if the first two years were about those dreamers submitting to this nightmare, the word for me this year is defiance. Mm -hmm. This year is this dreamer is here to defy this nightmare. So it gives it a little bit of a different, a different twist. And man, we got some good performers. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. gonna be great. And you know, the show is just a massive scale. Obviously, lots of fire. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you mentioned the, the tiny details and, and that is so important in everything that we create in this event is mm -hmm. are those tiny details because everyone's going to notice the big large things that we correct do. but it may be more subliminal of the tiny details but if they're not there the right. guests feel like something is missing even yeah, if it's yeah. not overt everyone always says why are you why are we decoring an area that's in complete darkness right well if we don't 
It'll there's going to be something off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not, it's not going to feel the same way. So those details are are immense, and of course the spectacle is immense, which is exactly what Nightmare Fuel brings to the the, the stage every single year. And yeah. you do a fantastic job. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you for talking us through yeah, it. This is awesome. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Now go back to your corner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we've talked haunted houses, we've talked scare zones, we've talked all of our thrilling live show, and the event is, is even larger than that. The one aspect to Halloween Horror Nights that everyone loves, including everybody at this table, <laughs> is the merchandise. This is, this is the chance for ourselves and our guests to be able to take home a piece of the event to, uh, as a remembrance, as a badge of honor, and no one better to be able to speak on all of the amazing merchandise our, our friends here from Merchandise. <coughs> Michael, thank you very much. Sure. Great to be here with all of you gentlemen. Uh, my name is Brian Beauregard. I'm the Executive Creative Director for Global Merchandise under uh, Universal's Product and Experiences team. And then I have uh, one of my infamous artists, Mr. Louis Arazi. <laughs> Go ahead, Louis. Hello, Michael. Thank you very much. My name is Louis Arazi, and I am the senior artist and lead designer for HHN Merchandise every year. I, I, I got to say, I. Again, everybody comes to us all the time and says, how do you keep doing it over and over again? How do you keep topping yourselves? And I would say the same to the two of you and your brilliant teams. How on earth <laughs> are you continually creating even more eye-catching, eye-popping merchandise year after year? You know, I think that's the biggest challenge for us is uh, both myself and Lewis have been with, with Universal, you know, ideating Halloween Horror Nights 20 years. This is our 20 years doing it. So mm -hmm. as you can see, it takes a lot of effort to come up with some great ideas, but I think the, the biggest part and the favorite part for us is a year prior, that before we even put any pencil to paper whatsoever, that we start ideating with all the teams and all the groups to get everybody's input and finding out what's the best path and avenue to head down creatively that's gonna be that connective thread across all different departments mm -hmm. in the entire company to make the actual event a holistic, seamless event. And that's one of my favorite meetings of the entire year because everything is in this kind of kernel stage. It is. You know, where the team's got some, some basic ideas of where we think we might be going with the brands, with the overall thematic, but it's mm -hmm. still real mushy. It's, 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 it's it a is. lot of just it kind is. of bullet point ideas. And, and then you'll hear these bullet point ideas from, from our team. Mm -hmm. And then you come to the table with these massive <laughs> mood boards yeah. of things that, you know, we're like, did we say all that? I don't think we did. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're yeah. so layered and beautiful. And it's, at that point, it's just, again, for you all, it's still that kernel. Mm -hmm. But we look at it and it's just this, this amazing collage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we really, we, we pull out. All, all the stops, really. We really do our investigation as far as what the creative trends are. What haven't we done for the event before? What can we deliver to our fans and our guests? Because we, the, the excitement of seeing them walk out of the event, know they've experienced all the houses, all the scare zones, but then they'll walk out with bags of merchandise, you know, <laughs> in addition to, you know, that layer of taking home the experience and being able to continue to live and breathe Halloween beyond the event. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So, you know, we throw everything at the wall to see what's gonna stick and what is unique. That's really the key thing is, what can we create that's unique that we didn't do last year or the year before, but we can pay homage to, but kind of build on those successes going forward. It's so just what, awesome. What aspects of the textures of the, the, the kind of the odd fellow backstory drew you into to some of the, the designs and some of the textures that you felt were really strong? I think for Oddfellow, I mean, Lewis can attest to this. I think it's the rich history where Oddfellow became and being able to tell that story competitively through our creativity and visual imagery, color, texture, and being able to bring that history and bring them to life mm -hmm. yeah. through the content. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Keeping uh, staying true to the mythology of the characters that you know that you guys created is really important for us because ultimately we'll, we're doing this for the fans, mm -hmm. you know. And if you get something wrong, you know, they'll call you out on it. So we got to oh, get absolutely. it right, <laughs> you know. And you know, the fans are like really passionate about this yeah. merchandise. So you know, we we put a lot of attention to detail to get it right from the beginning, yeah. from right. the planning stages. Yeah. So talk about some of the detail. You've got some. You've got some items here. Yeah, we, this, this is just a couple of uh, goodies that we are going to be introducing to the event this year. Um, we have a, an assortment of different, not only are we introducing you know, merchandise specific to the IPs that we're bringing in, but also our own proprietary uh, characters like Little Boo, mm -hmm. which everybody knows who he is by now. Yeah. This is the second year that we're bringing in merchandise for him and it's very popular and the guests love him and he's really become you know, an icon in its own right you know, yeah. for the event. 
And then uh, we have, uh, you know, your assortment of different types of drinkware. Uh, like this one is uh, <clears throat> the key art that I'm wearing right here. It's, uh, you know, the Creepy Curiosities program. Yeah. It's, uh, it's my favorite program that I worked on this year. <laughs> and um, You're not just saying that. <laughs> no, because he worked like <laughs> Yeah. No, I think uh, I, I'm just absolutely privileged to be surrounded by, you know, such creative people, you know, and creative partners, you know, that are equally passionate about this event. It just makes my job so much easier. What, what is that process for you when, again, you're hearing more of a logline, verbal idea? What, what for you sparks <clears throat> first? Is it a design? Is it a texture? Is it just kind of intent? Uh, it's, it's basically just a mishmash of different things. You know, like you say, you know, like you had alluded earlier to like the sounds and the color palettes, you know, you know what are we going to be able to do this year that we haven't done the, uh, in the past? Uh, there's definitely uh, a lot of opportunities but we all got to be, you know, synchronized, you know, mm -hmm. so that we bring one cohesive vision to the event. Uh, but for me, uh, definitely uh, just like looking at the mood boards that Brian presents, you know, this really sparks my imagination and gets my ideas rolling. And I think that's definitely, you know, where it starts, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, just finally sitting down at the computer on my drawing tablet and starting to render images and making it come to life, that's... Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, man. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and having done this for, for so long, and, and again, we're 32 years yes. into uh, a saga that is Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> right, yes. What, what still excites you to this day about the event, but, but also the, the types of items that you can bring to the table? I think the thing that excites me the most is the first stage of ideating and not have, having that pure, clean slate. Before you even stick the shovel in the sand to find out where do we even begin, and being able to work with all the talented folks here at this table, the team back you know, in our offices, all the product developers that have great ideas as far as product piece types that we're doing and how they can bring our art to life. But it's really, it's working collaboratively of, of really tapping into all the top resources creatively and getting that little nugget from everybody to be able to build on what we want to create and bring that to life. So it's a lot of exploration, a lot of sketching. I mean, we're looking over each other's shoulders, bouncing ideas off of each other. I think that's what works so well is that we really maximize our creative input mm -hmm. to be able to deliver the best content we can visually that's going to represent your experience in the park. And real quick, what's the one item that you is your favorite item from this year's event? One per category? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, one item. Wow, that's awesome. Well, <clears throat> Lewis has a, a, a piece right here we did this year. We're introducing a new distress flannel piece that has the creepy curiosities, which is the overall theme for this year. Uh, something we've never done before. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing hand. But to be able to do product like this uh, for our event, it's being able to start and ideate early enough to be able to deliver the content and the visual creativity and the files that we can be able to work with our vendors and our manufacturers to being able to source these really unique garments. I mean, it takes a lot of lead time because some of this is importing and we know how long it takes to do that. So it's being able to deliver that content quick enough and fast enough that we can explore unique items. So I'd say that's probably my number one piece right now because we've never done it before. <clears throat> and a close second could be number one is we're introducing a Hellfire. Basically, it's, it's the, the jean jacket that's unique and it's a, a direct lift from the actual show itself. That's oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we, we could not bring that today because it just mysteriously didn't <clears throat> show up. So we're like, hmm. so somebody may have it as we speak. But, but I stole it. That's, <laughs> that's Charles. It. That's it. That's it. So again, that's a, a great second, but you'll see that very soon as soon as you visit the parks. That's fantastic. Well, so I, fabulous. I cannot thank you, the both of you enough, your teams the for team the talent amazing. and the and the time that you put into bringing this extension of the event to life. It's been it's, absolutely awesome. It's wonderful. So thank you, very thank, much. You. Well, thank you gentlemen for having us here and great partnership and we look forward to another 20 years. Hopefully. It's going to happen. Yes, do it. We are huge fans. Huge thank fans. Thank you. Thank you. Genuinely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So we've just been shown some crazy cool new merchandise for this year's event. And again, the merchandise is, is mind blowing, but another fantastic aspect of Halloween Horror Nights is the experience of where you purchase the merchandise, which is a, an entirely different world every single year. And with us, we have members of our Visual Merchandise Projects team, and they're gonna talk to us about the theming for this year's Tribute Store. Welcome. Thanks, Thank thanks you. for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Of course. Um, so I'm Sarah Hollers, uh, Project Manager of the Visual Merchandise team. I have with me Greg Duffy. He, um, he is a project supervisor for this year's Tribute Store. Um, he came to me early on in the conceptual um, time period and was like, I have this crazy idea. 
It's something <laughs> different. It's something we've never done. Um, what do you think of this? And he puts this like script on my desk and I'm like, what, what is this? What, what are you talking about? So I want to turn it over to him because this is his, this is his project and it's his brain on paper. So <laughs> take it away, Greg. Well, yeah, as Sarah mentioned, um, I kind of came in with a bit of a script, which we've never really had for a store before. Yeah. But it was the idea of, well, we always try and do exper like experiential merchandise and retail and things along those lines. So, you know, what better way than to kind of get people into it than to tell a story with it? Mm -hmm. So we usually have the four rooms of the tribute store. So we had the idea of kind of doing a classic uh, horror comic book where there's different stories by different artists and whatnot as you would go through the book. So what if we brought that to life? And what if we actually took people into this world of the comic book and kind of told them through and kind of did it in different art styles? Mm. And so it's a fun way for us to play both with story and with look and with feel and with tone. Yeah. So we did. So we decided to head down that path. And if you're going to do a store based on a comic book, you have to create a comic book first. Yeah. So that's how we started. We created a comic book. That's amazing. So can I take kind of a macro view for just a second? The idea of just what I think we could call like retail-tainment. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's more than yeah. just a merchandise <laughs> Absolutely. store. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. How did that even evolve? Because this is, this is several years now of mm -hmm. upping the ante as far as presenting a, a unique and different tribute store every single year. Right. So the bones of that, what, what drew everyone to that idea even initially? I think it was in 2015, Twister closed. Mm -hmm. We had the retail store in there, and um, Rob Cometti, our senior director, was like, we have an empty store for Horror Nights. What are we going to do in that place? So I think we actually partnered with TJ and you guys in entertainment. We took some trucks out there one night and loaded up stuff you guys weren't using for Horror Nights. We have a lot and of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And we all just kind of loaded things up, and we ended up um, going to Twister like overnight and unloading all these props in there and like set dressing it. And it was you know, our leadership that was like, you know, do what you have to do. It doesn't matter. If the store is going away, do whatever you have to. And I think that really laid the ground for what the tribute store is today, being able to just create with whatever we had, whatever props, whatever merchandise we had that year. It was very much like here, here's the open ground. And it led to what it is today and how it's evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. Talk about, because obviously in Horror Nights, Every time you enter a haunted house, it's a completely different world. When you walk in the scare zones, they're their own kind of integrated storyline visually. The tribute stores are their own unique world that, sure. that has ties back to the event. Talk about that creative process. Sure. Well, it kind of depends on what it is that we're doing, because we started with just Halloween. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of playing with some of the IPs that we would have each year. It would play with some of the uh, themes of the event they would have in there and how to kind of bring those to life and kind of showcase the merch. And then as we expanded into doing holiday and Mardi Gras in summer, it kind of evolved there too. Summer kind of being the wild card of what we want to do each summer. We can kind of bring people into all these different worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so the creative process, you know, kind of starts with a bunch of us sitting in a room and having these big blue sky meetings where we all kind of sit around and throw out ideas and get each other excited and riled up and come up with bigger and crazier ideas for anything and everything that we can do and then kind of partnering with what we have coming out merch wise how do we make this all kind of cohesive and then dialing it down to what actually gets built and the guests walk into you know sometimes as quick as three months later mm -hmm. it's uh, <laughs> fast yes it's That's very nuts. fast it's very fast we're very tired people sometimes <laughs> well, I, I know we're all very excited because we're comic book Readers, yes, sir. I love comic books. Sure, I I'm excited to go in and see the comic books. Um, you guys want to see the comic book now? Wait, what? We have I have some here. <laughs> yes. Yes. As I said, we had to create. <laughs> as I said, if you're gonna do a comic book store, you have to create a comic book. Yes. So we made a comic book, and this is oh. what the people will be actually getting to step into <laughs> as they uh, as they oh, enter gorgeous. this year. That is and awesome. uh, there's so four different stories in it. This is a full-fledged comic. It's a full-fledged comic book. Not just a cover. This is not just a cover. There's an actual book inside. That is I'm, awesome. Yep. Can I open, open it? The kid right now. <laughs> I'm gonna open it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a collector, so it's mine stays awesome. in. The oh, right. Stay. Open well, it up. It's worth a look. You even have ads. Oh, it uh -huh. feels. It's a lot it's... of throwbacks in oh, the book. Oh, shop and You'll go. You'll see some stuff in there. Yep. Yeah, from um, from Seeds of Extinction. The lightning, uh, lightning, lightning deal, lightning yeah. gulch. Lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So this is full of this is full of Easter eggs. Yes, yes. the the book is full of Easter eggs, and the oh, stories yes. are all realized in the store. So we seriously have oh. not seen this before. This is, <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> not, this is not a game. We have the Brooders. 
Okay, can we just, can like, we cut? Because we can read this? <laughs> we'll respond afterwards. So, like, after. Oh, yeah. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. We're going to keep it's, going. It's, <laughs> it's great, too, because there's different styles yeah. of right. artwork. And these are represented. So, uh, me and two of our other artists, uh, Adam Hostetler and Kevin Kopp, hammered all the art for this. Wow. Um, and so, we wanted it to have the feeling of different artists that would come to the table in you know, one of these classic comics and bring their own style and their own vibe and their own feel to each story. And so each room of the store matches it. So, you know, when you go into the first room, it's based on this first story here that I did the art for and all the paint and everything looks very kind of washy watercolor with heavy black ink lines. And then when you enter uh, room two, which is our Boris Schuster story, mm -hmm. we brought Boris Schuster back. Of course. Uh, yes. Kind awesome. of a classic love that. film noir. Yes. Um, it, the whole room is black and white. So the whole room looks cool. like this. The whole room has been treated with painted light and it's wow. pure black and pure white. And so you're thrown into the story. There's animated rain, like it's raining all around you. Um, we have ripples on the floor that appear around you as you're walking through That's there. Um, and then you enter into room three and you, you're face to face with giant, you know, kind of classic halftone printing style. Um, and you go into an old diner and uh, that's where our case line is, so you can actually buy food from the diner that you're in in room three. <laughs> um, and then at the end, we take you to London, and you go through a very painterly, expressionistic version of London, and you come get kind of hunted by Jack the Ripper as you uh, finish sho your shopping adventure. And it looks like you kind of have like an, uh, your own storytelling yes. character that guides you yep. through the whole... We have a character named the Curator. Okay. And he is our horror host. He is at the beginning of every room and the end of every <laughs> room. so cool. And he <laughs> sets it up and he tells the story and he's there at the end to kind of send you off with a little bit of a quip. Uh, it's very, very, very old school campy fun. It's a I lot of fun. I want the eight inch tall statue. Yes. Yeah. Here's I the... want, like, I, I want, I want. <laughs> and currently you guys can get yourself a one of a one comic book with yourself in the cover. Um, oh. The guys themselves, they created five variant covers yeah. and they're available for purchase. And these will be up in the tribute store in the hallway. And then at the end of the run, this will get sent to you by mail. Yeah. This, is, this is so cool because something like this and the tribute store, it just speaks to the amazing branching elements that exist within this event. Mm -hmm. uh, of all these different opportunities, mm -hmm. they're just derived from what began as a three night event yeah. you know, <laughs> right. 32 years ago. Yep. And now there's all of these elements that just provide layer, um, provide um, more insight, and just these amazing extensions of, of, the, of the live experience that, that just evolve it and, and make yeah. it more real. And for kudos everybody. to your yeah. team too for like, they will contact us mm -hmm. a year before you know like nine months before mm -hmm. and we they they take what we're doing in the street and they're like okay let's figure this out and so it blends with what we're doing it mm -hmm. there it's it's not silo work we're all working together and you guys man you come up with some really cool <laughs> stuff so we get to keep these right <laughs> Sure. No, not yeah, an yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying yes. I'm not, I'm not saying, saying no. no. I'll take that as a yes. I want to thank uh, our, our guests from our visual merchandise team. This is fantastic. Thanks. Thank you so Thanks much. For Thanks for having us. Really. Thank, thank you. you. Of course, of course. Horror invades nearly every aspect of this event, including the food. And I'm always in awe of the creativity of our food and beverage team to take all the textures and ideas and the, and the intellectual properties yeah. and transform them into an extension of our event via your mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it delicious, delicious. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the peanut butter burger, uh -huh. oh, God. Uh, the cordycep, uh, which is a corn dog, I think. <laughs> Yeah. We hope. We hope. It yeah. tastes like it. Yeah. <laughs> a really good I, one. I actually. do know there's like a mushroom ravioli oh, with The Last of Us. So it's good. I actually tried that. It's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. We and always, pizza fries, which, you know, it, I eat them every night. <laughs> every night. Just well, and, I mean, that's the fun part for us, too. I mean, we, of course, have worked on these these uh, experiences and the attractions for the guests. But then to get to actually have a moment where we go and enjoy the food. And yeah. it is such a fun treat at the uh, for every event, every year. And it really just brings everything together. Yeah. Again, you've 100%. got every aspect you're um, experiencing within this event. The, yeah. the fear, the fun, the food, it all just, just, just is wrapped up into everything that is Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you all enough and everybody out there uh, how truly gratifying it is to uh, enjoy this event. Not only be part of the creative process, um, but, but also 
being able to experience it along with yeah. all of you. Because at the end of the day, uh, we've mentioned this before, and it's it's true then, it's true now. Uh, we're all just amazing fans of this event yeah. and everything this event is, everything it was, yeah. and everything it's going to continue to be. Uh, that is Halloween Horror Nights. And uh, thank you all for being here thank today. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks to all of our, our guests from every aspect of our company that brings Halloween Horror Nights to life every single year. Yes. And it is for the fans. Yes. It is for you. Mm. So if you've been to the event, thank you so much. If you haven't been yet, please come. Uh, it's, it's select nights now to November 4th, and uh, we cannot wait to see you at Halloween Horror Nights. This absolute labor of love. That what is that? Uh, is this like a... Did you guys... One of those little like... Are you guys doing this? Is this part of the... No? Do we need to, do we need to stop, stop or go? You think you know anything of horror? Fear? What chills you to your core? Your horror night is but a taste of the true horror I possess. <laughs> you have no idea what lurks in the crevices of my darkness. In fact, you're better off joining me so I can show you myself. There's plenty of room here to enlighten you. Oh, and of course, oh, always room for more. Oh. <laughs>